Hey y'all, hope things are going well today. So I got a main topic, but I've got a secondary topic, and I'm actually going to do the secondary topic first, just to get it out of the way, because it's going to be really short. So, I bought these. They're the Doritos Tortilla Chips Taco Flavor. It just showed up in the store, and I was curious, because I wondered, geez, just what do tacos actually taste like? I mean, you know, usually if you get a taco, it's a certain type of flavored meat, and a, either a taco shell or a soft taco shell. So I wondered what they would do with it. So I went ahead and I bought it and I tried it. Can't taste it. <laughs> I, can't, I just can't taste them. They're, they're certainly not as dynamic as nacho cheese. They're not as, as zesty as the Cool Ranch. And I've never even tried those real hot ones. That, that ain't happening. I can't taste them. So you know what? That's the review for those. Just to get that out of the way. So here's a double question for you that might seem like it's the same thing but it's not the first question what would you actually do for money the second question what wouldn't you do for money now there are people who end up on these reality shows where they have to do some really stupid stuff if you ask me I can't even remember the names of most of them because I've never watched any of those shows but you know I've seen the commercials and there was the one where uh, the guy had to have, or the people had to have rats walking on their faces. <laughs> like, are you kidding? That's just the nastiest thing in the world. And then there's Survivor. I remember the name of that one. Where these people basically let someone take them to an island and do all kind of stuff to them. And they vote on it and do all this other kind of mess, whatever, for some kind of money. And there's, this, what is it, Big Brother? Is that the one where they put all the people in the house and then they vote people out of the house until the end and then someone wins? I, I don't know. But you have Bachelor and Bachelorette and a whole host of these reality shows with the intention of seeing what people will actually do for money. It's not like a competition like on the Food Channel where they've got the chefs that compete or the people who compete uh, to see who can make the better dessert. I mean, you know, I understand stuff like that. I understand stuff like Tough Enough where uh, people work through all the wrestling things to see who will be the person who's going to get that big contract. You know what? Those are career things. But this other stuff, the only person I know who actually made a career off of Survivor is Elizabeth Hasselback. And you know what? Y'all can keep her. Take her back. Please take her back. <laughs> that's so wrong, but that's my story. So anyway, the other question is actually more important, which is what won't you do for money? Um, you know, you sometimes have these ethical boundaries that can be really, really big, and then sometimes they're a little small, and you're not really sure until you really start thinking about a little bit more just how ethical it was or is. For instance, y'all know that I do a lot of writing. I've been paid to do a lot of writing. One thing I've yet to do is ghostwrite a book for someone. That happens all the time, by the way. There's a lot of people who hire someone to write a book for them on a topic that they have no intention of reading just so they can put out a book in their name saying, hey, look what I did. And they take all the credit for it and they make all the money for it because they paid for it, but they're not really an authority. They're not really an expert. They just had someone write a book for them. This has been suggested by a lot of people who try to teach people how to make money online. Personally, I find that a little abhorrent uh, because, you know, how do you call yourself an expert at it? Someone may ask you to come talk about it. Someone may ask you to demonstrate it, but you can't do it because you didn't do the work. Remember the second Harry Potter movie where the guy was supposedly this great wizard who'd taken on all these challenges and done all this stuff, and it turns out he didn't do any of it. And, he, you know, he ended up not necessarily getting called on it, but he got called on it <laughs> and ended up losing his mind. Okay, he made himself lose his mind, but y'all know if you saw the second movie. So you have that kind of instance. Then you have something that I did that I never really thought much about a bunch of years ago when someone asked me if I would write a series of papers out of a master class they were taking in college. They were in college, and they were taking this course, but they uh, I can't even remember what the degree was supposed to be in, but they had to take this uh, kind of elective course that didn't have anything to do with what they were majoring in. And she knew I wrote, and she gave me a dollar figure. I said, okay, sure, for that, I'll, I'll write you, you know, some papers. And I wrote papers on this particular subject. And then I remember having a discussion with someone at the time that I knew who's an academic saying, 
well, don't you think that's unethical? And I'd never thought about it at the time. I was just thinking, well, you know, just writing on this subject. It's research like I do for everything else. It's not like this was a person who was going to be a doctor who wanted me to write uh, a paper for them on stem cell research, whatever. I didn't really think about it. Now, I would probably say, yeah, you know what? That really was more of an ethical thing. I helped someone get a master's degree that, you know, maybe they didn't totally deserve because I wrote the papers. They were original. They weren't plagiarized. She did read the material, so, I mean, she had to take all the tests. But I wrote the papers. And a couple of those got A's, which I was amazed at because when I was in college, every paper I wrote got a B. <laughs> so... There you go. But still, I had to think about that, saying, hmm, that was interesting. So I've never done that again. Uh, but it was like, you know, in my mind, it was a borderline thing until after I'd done it and talked to someone who was at, in academia. So that, you have that kind of thing. Then you have something like a friend of mine named George, who's also a healthcare finance consultant, and I've mentioned that to y'all in the past, that I'm a healthcare finance consultant who went to uh, one of the local businesses that had to do something with healthcare, and they asked him to do this project. So he did this project. He put in the time, and, you know, he gave them this fee that, you know, they were going to owe him. And he said, you know, they agreed to it. And they paid him half of it up front. So he did all this work, and he goes to them to present his findings and his recommendations, and they said, oh, we're, we're sorry. We didn't really want you to do any work. We don't want to see what you produced. He said, you don't? He said, no. We have already put together something that we want you to present in your name. We just want you to sign your name to it. Well, <laughs> luckily, he had some kind of ethics because he read the thing first. He says, no, 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 I'm not putting my name on this. No, nope, I'm sorry. And you know what? Now I, we have to break our association. I will take the money that you already paid me, and I'm not going to ask for the rest of it. And I'm just going to move on because I'm not putting my name to that. And this was pretty substantive. I mean, you know, you're talking about $20,000 that he left on the table. I don't know that a lot of folks would leave $20,000 on the table. But you know what? I have. I've done the exact same kind of thing. I remember being at a hospital many years ago where the vice president of finance wanted me to sign off on something that I told him it was illegal for the reason he wanted to do it. He still wanted to do it anyhow. So what I did is I went back to the office and I wrote up this, this disclaimer. And I took it to him and I said, okay, this is the disclaimer that says that I told you you couldn't do this because it was illegal and you asked me to do it anyway. And I'm having you to sign this because... I don't want anything to happen later on where someone's going to say, oh, well, the consultant told us we could do this. So I need you to sign that. And he wouldn't sign it, and we didn't do it because it was illegal, and he knew it, and he was caught. So I gave up a whole lot of money on that one, and I took money from them because with what I do, sometimes if the reason is the wrong reason for doing it, that's what makes it illegal or fraudulent. So it's that question where, you know, sometimes we don't question our ethics on things like I did with writing the paper. I mean, I thought it was fine until later on when I thought about it and said, eh, you know what, maybe that was borderline. Or sometimes people will say, well, you know what, I'll just forget the ethics because it's a one-time thing. You know, there's the old um, test that's been given to people that says, um, if someone came to you and said, I will pay you $50,000. If you let me put something in your garage for one night, you don't get to ask me what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but just for one night. And then tomorrow I'll get it and I'll take it and that'll be that. And there's a lot of people who say, okay, yeah, we'll do that. And here's the thing. One, it's unethical because as my wife likes to call it, where there's a gimme, there's a gotcha. <laughs> Which basically says there's more to this than meets the eye. Also, if they come back to you a second time, what do you do? Now you're on the hook. How do you say, no, we did that once. We're not doing it again. You can't. You, you just have to understand if someone is willing to pay you $50,000 once, they're willing to do a heck of a lot more. And I don't just mean pay you more money or whatever to do it again. So that's ethics that just fell in a different way because that's ethics that get you killed. So, you know, sometimes people aren't thinking far enough in advance before they start doing certain things. 
people who end up being drug addicts. I'm sure that those folks who start taking meth or, or coke or uh, uh, crack or anything like that aren't necessarily thinking about the ethical part of it and what it might make them do later on. You know, you hear about these folks who go robbing people all the time or breaking the homes just to get stuff so they can trade it in for some little bit of money so they can buy more of it. I'm sure they weren't thinking of that ahead of time. You've got the, the people who will put things online. I talked about this in a previous video. Who will put things online without thinking about it. I mean, goodness, back in, back in March, we had one player on the Los Angeles Lakers secretly film another player on the Los Angeles Lakers asking him these probing questions that then somehow ended up on the internet. And that's a fracture. And this guy, you know, he's 19 years old. He, he wasn't thinking about it. He's just thinking about a prank without realizing that he basically lost the trust of his entire team. It may blow over with time. He might have to get traded or some other people might have to get traded. But, you know, that was unethical to do in the first place. There was no good that could come out of something like that. So, like I said, it's just this question that I don't know if y'all ever ask yourselves that. So I'm asking you. What wouldn't you do for money? Not what would you do because we've seen what people will do. <laughs> and some of those people are just sick and crazy. What wouldn't you do? That's my question. That's the question I'd like you to ask yourself. Um, don't bother. Just to reiterate that part. Anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day. We will talk again.